and we're back for another one. Today, we're talking about hazardous goods, hazardous materials. So I know there's a lot of different kind of ways we can take this video, but I guess, can you maybe just start us off with, you know, what are hazardous goods and maybe some just talking points on on selling hazmat products on Amazon? Yeah, well, yeah, hazardous products are uh, something that um, usually contains um, fluid or flammable. Uh, because Amazon, they have a separate storage for, uh, you know, flammable uh, products or materials. So, and Amazon is just, um, they will audit your products if it's actually, you can send it to FBA for them to fulfill it. If not, it's either you won't be allowed to um, send the product or you could do it by uh, your own um, mer merchant fulfillment. So, yeah, cool. So yeah, that's, that's, a, that's the general idea. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I think a couple of things to mention, if you're selling hazardous products, ha what uh, Amazon deems hazardous, number one is you're going to pay more for fees and shipping is a little bit different, you know, storage fees, all mm -hmm. that stuff. So that's an important consideration. I think um, w from the planning perspective, so if you have a product or you're thinking about launching a product and you're trying to determine if it's considered hazardous, the first thing that you know, I know we've done uh, in the past uh, working with various sellers is Amazon's got two important resources. One is the hazmat identification. Um, if you search, I think in Seller Central for hazmat or hazardous goods, you know, mm -hmm. it'll probably pop up. But essentially, you can put an ASIN in, and Amazon will tell you. So, like sometimes, if you're going to launch a product and you have you don't have an ASIN yet, but there's a competitor already selling that product or something similar you can check their ASIN and see, is Amazon considering their product a hazardous good? If you already have your product, obviously, then you can put your ASIN in and it'll tell you instantly, is this hazardous, yes or no? That's a great starting point. Also, if you search hazmat fees, it'll tell you more about the haz hazmat fee structure, which is different and it is significantly higher. So important to consider. But I think like the next step is two, two, two pieces here. So one, what if I'm selling a good that's actually not hazardous what do i have to do to prove to amazon that it's not a hazmat good well you just have to provide amazon a, like an exemption sheet or set the data exemption sheet uh, for um let's say they just misclassified it because of let's say the images or maybe the, uh, the your product title or bullet points that triggered something on the system and then automatically classified it as a dangerous product so you have to um, upload that flat file. You can also download that flat file in the system. Uh, once you're on that dashboard um, on the uh, bottom left corner, it will give, it depends on what kind of product it is. Is it like exemption for a uh, battery or maybe an exemption for a uh, product that is not flammable? So there are two exemptions that you can download. Yeah. So if you know for a fact your product's not hazardous, then again, Seller Central, you can search for this, but MSDS or SDS exemption form, they'll give you a form. You just fill mm -hmm. it out, upload it, and then you might have to tweak or edit your listing, which obviously flat files are going to come into play there. Um, the other thing like I'll just call out is I know that it, you know, a lot of people are selling in the U.S. as their primary market, but every market's going to have slightly different regulations. So you know, you if you're selling, I know Europe has a lot more stringent uh, rules on batteries than maybe the U.S. or they're just different. So that's also something you need to check and consider is check each market you're going to sell that product into. Um, I think then the next thing. So let's say, yeah, I've got a hazardous good. I'm moving forward with it. I'm launching. Well, you need to get into the hazmat program first. And, I, you know, I know at varying times, sometimes it you can. So it's something you have to apply for at least you historically, depending when you're watching this video, maybe they'll open it up. But Amazon has separate warehouses for storing and fulfilling hazard, hazardous goods. Um, and first, you to, to be able to send those in, you have to get into that program. So can you just talk about like how you do that or and how hard it is, I suppose? Well, it's kind of hard, actually. You, you just have to um, maybe on your search box, um, select hazmat or type hazmat in there, and then there will be like a lot of like, um, uh, like what do you call this one? And then just check to select the hazmat in there, and there's an application for, for you to apply for dangerous products. You just have to um, like click that and submit. And then 
and they never give you. Sometimes if they will tell you if you are eligible or maybe you have to wait, and once it, if it is available, then just apply and then you probably be approved for the uh, selling product under the dangerous um, category. Nice. Yeah. So I, I know mm -hmm. I personally worked with a couple of brands that, um, you know, have gone through that process and depending when, you know, I've, I've seen one brand where they applied and they got in like two weeks later and I've seen another brand that couldn't get in for six full months. And so if you're considering, yeah. if you're a seller that's considering launching something in the future, it might be worth just going and doing, and this is what I recommend too, is just go apply to get into that program now. Cause you know, you'd rather have it you know, even if you're not using it as much, but to get into that program. And the other thing is, once you do get approved, you still have some other limitations, mainly that you um, only have a certain amount of storage designated for hazmat goods. And just like any other storage limitations, you know, the more sales volume you have generally correlates to getting that limit increased. But, um, you know, it's something you have to consider is, Maybe I just got approved, but you know, I know when working with a past client, they were selling a liquid in a one gallon format and they could only pretty much send a hundred units at a time in, but you know, they're selling, they, yeah. their sales velocity was enough to be selling 300 to 500 units a month. So it was impossible in, uh, for months for until they got it, that it increased, you know, for, so that, that was a big challenge for. Uh, the brand that I, I had worked with in the past. So one thing I wanted to call out. Anything? I think add? right now, you know, Amazon, Amazon is, I mean, you know, they, they're constantly changing. And I know right now that if you, let's say, want to increase your storage allowance, then you can make a bid. But I'm just not 100% certain because I don't have any client that right now that uh, like selling hazardous product, if you can actually bid for an, like an increased allowance for hazmat by I'm thinking it, it could be, you know. Yeah, I'm not positive on that either, but that's a good point. Um, the other thing I think, and this is where run into some headaches, you know, is uh, so inbounding to F the hazmat FBA centers. So, you know, with, with a traditional product that's not hazardous, if you're going to do what many sellers do, which is you're going to uh, ship your stuff into FBA, you're going to use Amazon an Amazon partnered carrier or, you know, UPS, you, you know, USPS FedEx and print the labels at a really good rate from Amazon. Great. It's easy. And if Amazon loses the product, it's pretty easy to then go and file an investigation and get a reimbursement. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, hazardous goods don't work uh, the same. Um, so, you know, the, well, I'll, I'll, let me ask you this, like, what are the differences or what are the things there that make that different or more challenging? Well, yeah, as you said, we cannot, uh, as a sell, uh, seller selling dangerous product, they cannot use Amazon partnered carrier to ship in their products to FBA. They have to either yeah, use their own um, carrier to um, to arrange the shipment to right. Amazon. So uh, again, so in that case, as, as you mentioned as well, like if uh, those products like like damage to, um, by, by the carrier, then you cannot claim that from Amazon. You have to claim it to um to the carrier that you used you know to uh, submit the case and tell them that you know amazon returned all of my products they are uh, already classified as um, damage during um, shipment so then file a case with them and then of course for you to um to claim that uh damaged product as well or reimbursement for that damaged product you have to make sure that during the shipment preparation you're also paying for insurance yeah, because if not, then they will not for sure cover that. Yeah, so an like extra cost for you. So, yeah, and like yeah. using an Amazon partner carrier, it's already guaranteed. Right. Yeah, and I think that's one of the most frustrating parts about selling hazardous goods is one, there's, I mean, just more legwork you have to do. Plus, you know, in terms of shipping, plus you have to pay higher fees. And the other thing I've noticed, at least with most of the brands I've worked with that have had hazardous goods. And I don't know why this is, but because you're not, you have to use, you have to go and buy the UPS shipping labels or, you know, get your own pallet, palletized service yourself and put the tracking in and schedule all that. I normally see that mm -hmm. Amazon somehow loses uh, way more, like a significant amount of the, the, the inventory. And so if you're not paying for the insurance, which is an extra cost, but during your inbounding, uh, that can be pretty big, you know, and I'm talking like, mm -hmm. I know 
again, the, the brand I've worked with that was selling a one gallon liquid, you know, it's heavy, it's big. And Amazon was losing like 10% of them or claiming they were lost. And so we would have to file tons of investigations, which is more work. And, you know, mm -hmm. so I think those are all really important things to consider. And I guess that all goes back to when, like be extra conservative, I think, when running numbers for a hazardous product that you you want to launch on Amazon. It's doable, right? And there can be definitely money in it, but there's definitely unique challenges to it. So you really have to have your numbers dialed in for that stuff. Oh uh, yeah, awesome. And just to be just to be clear, you were not telling you guys to not sell dangerous products. <laughs> we're just uh, giving you all the checkbox that you need to make sure that um, you meet be before selling on Amazon. Uh, because it will be really, really difficult to, uh, you know, to get it fixed or to get Amazon support to actually help you. So yeah. knowing and understanding all of this will make it smoother and easier for you to sell on Amazon, even if it is classified as dangerous product. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it's certainly possible to sell hazmat products. It is more challenging in many ways, and there's a lot of other fees, but so, you know, I personally would not want to launch hazmat products, but depends on the products. Maybe there's, a, if there's opportunity there and you see it, then it might be worth going for. But, um, all right. I think that's, that's all the questions I have. Do you want to add anything else or do we cover kind of all of the basics for hazmat? Yeah, yeah, we covered all of the basics. Of course, there are certain issues that is um, advanced, but it's not something we can cover. Great. Well, yeah, I think, uh, again, for anyone watching, if you have questions, you're already selling a hazmat product or thinking about it and you need some help, feel free to reach out to us. Check the comments, the description below this video, and we'll put uh, ways to get in touch with us. But I think that's it for this video, and we'll see everyone at the next one. All right. Cheers.